This is a complete tutorial where you're gonna learn how to light, how to shoot, as well as how to edit to get to this final fall portrait. Hello, my friends. Welcome to SLR Lounge. Welcome to my humble abode. Well, at least my office. My name is Pi. I'm gonna be your host through this tutorial. And I wanna start this by just thanking Profoto. They are sponsoring this video. They're not sponsoring me thanking them. I just wanted to thank them because they are one of the few companies just in general, in our industry in general, that sponsors us and allows me to speak freely about anything and everything. I can talk and be my authentic self, which is a very rare thing. Now, I used Profoto products before we were actually sponsored, which made it a very easy partnership. But I love their gear. It's incredibly reliable, easy to use, and just an awesome choice for professional photographers. Let's go ahead and dive into the tutorial. So I've actually prepped some exercise files for all you guys which you can download in the description of the video. There is a link to these exercise files and we're gonna walk through step-by-step. Step. So you're gonna see quite a bit of behind the scenes as we go through and kind of narrate my thought process through the actual shoot. Now you might also remember this because we actually posted uh, the shooting piece of this video on the Profoto IGTV channel. So on Profoto USA as well as Profoto Global on Instagram, you can follow and we have new content there all the time. So it's it's worth a follow if you're on IG. So download those files if you want to be a rebel. You can, uh, you know, use your own images, but they're not going to be these ones. So that doesn't make sense. So look, let's talk first. We're going to walk through the camp framework. Okay. Camp is a framework that I've designed to make the process of photography more simple, more step by step. So you're not kind of overwhelmed by all the different decisions in front of you. It stands for compose and then ambient light, then modify, add light, then photograph. So let's start first with composition. And it helps when it comes to composition that you're thinking towards kind of a final vision for the photograph. So my vision for this shot, and I think I actually talked about it on location, but my vision for this shot was Kaylin kind of being surrounded by falling leaves and being backlit and kind of highlighted in this foresty scene. So immediately I know for a composition, I want her to be kind of smack dab in the center of my frame, which is exactly where she is here. I wanted to choose a background that kind of leads into her. So I have her on this pathway because it gives me a nice background that kind of creates a, a really nice bokeh effect, but also the trees on each side lead into her. So we got composition kind of dialed in. Now at this point, for the technique that I'm gonna be showing you, I'd highly recommend using a tripod. I have a Peak Design travel tripod, but any tripod is gonna be fine. I have the 50 millimeter and for some reason, my Sigma art lens always reads as a Tokina opera. Sigma should look into that, I'm not sure what's going on. But anyway, I have the Sigma art on my old trusty 5D4 on the tripod. Now you want it on a tripod because we're gonna be layering these photographs and having it stable is the difference between spending an hour in Photoshop versus two to three minutes, okay? But on track. One thing that I like to note is throughout all of my content, I don't want you guys to get locked into specifics of brand and exactly the gear that I, like, y'all can use whatever lenses, cameras, tripods, all the gear that you have, use that. The techniques apply no matter what. So look, we've got our composition dialed in. The next thing we need to do is actually dial in our ambient light. Now I wanna show you something. If I actually exposed for skin, if I did kind of what the camera would want me to do, I would be sort of around two stops brighter. So this is exposing for skin. And honestly, as a natural light portrait, there's nothing wrong with it, okay? It looks nice the way it is. What we wanna do now is dial in our ambient light. And when you're doing this, I want you to think that ambient light exposure is choosing your intention. The darker that I go with this image, the more flash I have to add to it and the more dramatic the shot is gonna be. The lighter the ambient exposure, the brighter the image, the less flash we're gonna add and the more natural an image is going to look. So think of this piece as deciding on your intention. Note that we haven't even touched the light yet. That's the whole purpose of the framework is to work step by step through the process and to simplify. So for ambient light, 
I'm choosing 1 1,000th of a second, F1.4, and ISO 100. Why? Because, well, I have enough light on Kalen's face that I can lift it out in post. It, it's easy to brighten there. The shadows and everything around her are dark, but they're still preserved. And we have overall detail, so I'm, I'm kind of erring more towards this dramatic side. Now in a moment, you'll see that I bumped the exposure a bit, but we bumped the exposure to bring it up one stop. So we're still kind of erring more towards the dramatic side to add in this light. So now we have composition dialed in, we have our amulet exposure, we go to modify or add light. We really aren't gonna modify light in this scene. We don't have a reflector and we're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do instead is I have a Profoto B10 I'm placing that on a Manfrotto nano stand. It goes onto a nano stand really easily. I can set it up, do it all myself, which I think is handy dandy because we don't always have assistance with us, right? With the flash set up, because of my shutter speed at 1 1,000th, I have to go to high speed sync. So on your remote, press the high speed sync button. This is gonna reduce flash power. And that pretty much means that if you're shooting daytime with a fast shutter speed, you're gonna be at full power and then dial in from there. And I believe we just stayed at full power. That gets us to this place. This is where you look at it and you go, okay, we've got crazy flyaways going on. See, whenever you backlight light colored hair against a dark background, you get insane amounts of flyaways. So my next step was, hey mom, can you come in and just help to mat down Kaylin's hair? And Nicole came in you know, did the typical mother thing. Well, it wasn't that gross. Uh, but she did that, matted it down, and then we get to this shot. Now we're ready to photograph. We've got the light in position. I like the way that it looks. I like the exposure. I make one adjustment, which is I'm going to bump the ISO to 200. So one stop brighter to get to this. My reasoning was I do have all my shadows preserved. So if you look at this and you press J, everything's preserved there. But I thought, you know, I don't need these highlights to be completely, like even right now, I can still recover them very easily. So a little bit of them kind of peaking isn't a big deal. If I can preserve a little better shadow detail, I'm going to get a little bit more image quality out of the shot. I also can power up the flash a little bit more by raising the ISO. So it kind of brightens the flash as well. So I thought, let's go to here. I'm going to show you some other trips and uh, tricks and techniques inside a post as well. But this is the place where we're actually ready to photograph. So we get to the P piece. That sounded weird. So here's where I'm going to aim for expression. And then I'm going to go and do the leaves. And as you're going to see, so the first shot, I'm really going for just kind of a cutesy expression on Kaylin's face, just a smile with the lips. I had a few different expressions, but this is the one that I have in our exercise file. So we'll use this one. I think I had some full smiles and some different shots too. Then I had Nicole as well as uh, one of my behind the scenes guys. I believe it was Mike that was helping us out. It was either Mike or I can't remember who was on the camera. Mike and Anthony were helping out too throw leaves into the frame. So the benefit of doing this as a composite is you'll notice that despite their hands being full of leaves and throwing it, it's really difficult to cover the entire frame with just one single shot while also getting the right expression. Look at her expressions. Every time these leaves come across, she's closing her eyes and that's that's natural, right? Like it's just our, our instinctual response to kind of flinch whenever anything's thrown up in the air, even though it's not gonna hurt anyone. So. I can focus in on one shot on just the expression. Then I can focus in on covering different areas of the frame with leaves, and that's exactly what we did. Now we're gonna go to step two in this process. So now we're getting into Lightroom. We're gonna edit the images. This tutorial is already gonna get a little bit lengthy, so I'm not gonna make this a full post-production tutorial. What I'm gonna do is say, use your favorite look, your favorite preset at this point on that main image. So I usually like to choose that great expression, the kind of baseline shot, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose from uh, Visual Flow's Modern Pack. Now Visual Flow, this is a preset company that we've created that designs presets by lighting condition. We have other videos on this and it's something that I encourage you guys to do with your own presets is adapt them to lighting conditions so they actually work. So this image was shot in soft light because the light on her face is soft. So I'm gonna choose soft light and presets that are designed based on lighting condition. Well, we statistically sample these 
to get them to work amazingly well every time. So you can see one click. So I'm going to do that again, one click, and we get to this place. It's already awesome. I love it. So this modern look kind of adds a bit of warmth and everything to the image. It keeps it bright. What I'm going to do now, so at this point, you just dial in your favorite look. It really doesn't matter what it is. This part I want you to pay attention to. In the Visual Flow Toolkit is uh, dodge and burn filters that we frequently use. One of them is a radial burn. This is essentially adding a mobile vignette to your image. And if you don't have Visual Flow tools, I want you to create this yourself. It's actually really easy. You're gonna press Shift M to select the radial filter tool. You're gonna drop a pin anywhere in the frame and you're gonna dial this to negative 0.5 exposure and you're gonna save it out. Now save it as a preset. So click plus, create preset, and then check none and only select radial filter. So that's what happens when I select radial burn is it just drops this pin right in the middle of my frame. The beauty in this is now I don't have to go and do this manually. That whole process of like adding this in, I just click a preset, it drops in my radial burn. I can move it where I want, hold down alter option, and now I can increase the strength or decrease the strength just by holding alter option and sliding left and right. So watch this folks. I'm going to create a mobile vignette that highlights her face. And then look, see how her hands and the dress is getting kind of unnaturally dark in a way that almost looks like death down here. It's not good. So what I'm going to do is select the brush option, hold down alter option. And now you're just going to paint that mask off the dress. Okay, I'm gonna paint it off the dress. I'm also gonna paint it off her body. Right there. Now, if I want to kind of refine that feather, I might just kind of go subtly across the bottom and add a little bit of that vignette back in just on the edges of the shot, right? And that looks so nice. So look at this, isn't it kind of crazy because let me turn off the uh, highlight and clipping alert. I'm gonna press I to also turn off my information. But look at this, this is the before shot and this is the after shot. Look at the way everything is just popping. It looks awesome. Okay, so now you have dialed in what you want your image to look like. The last thing I'm gonna do is warm this up just a tiny bit because I like things a little bit on the warm side. Now the last step in Lightroom is to select all the images in this set. So these are all the images that have the leaves thrown throughout the frame, right? With this image selected, this is called, Adobe actually calls this the most selected image. It is the one that is, so you can click on any of these. Uh, so in a selection, if you click any image, gosh dang it, any image, it'll turn it to the most selected image. So with this image, with your settings dialed in as the most selected image, you're gonna press Control Shift S or Command Shift S to sync. Now, I think I screwed up my shortcuts. <laughs> so look, it is indeed Control Shift S to synchronize settings, but I have done something with my shortcut, so it's not working. Sometimes I remap things and I mess things up. We'll fix that later. Let's focus on this. You can go ahead and press check all and then press synchronize. And what that's gonna do is synchronize all the settings that you just did across all the images. And that's perfect because what we're gonna do now is go to step three. So with this image still selected and all the images in this grouping selected, right click, go to edit in, and you're gonna open as layers in Photoshop. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna export from Lightroom with those settings. It's gonna pull it into Photoshop and it's gonna place them into one file where each of these images are on their own layer. I have quite a few images selected, so I'm gonna give that just a second. Okay, so now we are into Photoshop. Let's go ahead and press F just so we go full screen and then let's move this so we can kind of get this right in the center. Now our most selected layer is on top, okay? I'm gonna label this most selected, why? It's an awesome name. I mean, I would have called that just like the key image, right? The key selected, I don't know, most, the, the most selected. So here's what I like to do. You can do this in however order you like, but I'm gonna do this in kind of the way that I think is the most simple. Okay, so we have our layer labeled. The first thing that I want you guys to do is to select all the layers. Just holding down shift, left click to select all. You're gonna go to edit and then auto align. This is where being on the tripod is so fantastic because even though there are tiny subtle variations in the movement 
it makes this very easy for Photoshop just to automatically align everything as you see here. So it's aligned all the layers. If this is handheld, sometimes that auto function doesn't even work and you end up having to do it manually. And that's what takes a long, long time. So get it up onto the tripod. Now I'm gonna show you my workflow. This is kind of the way that I like to work. All of this is really my workflow. So feel free to tweak and modify to your heart's content. But what I like to do is take each of these leaf layers, drag it above my most selected layer, then I'll hold down Alter Option. Okay, holding Alter Option, press the mask. This adds a black mask. So it now makes that layer invisible, right? Black conceals, white reveals. Press B to select your brush, X to switch your colors back to their default, and you're gonna paint white to reveal that layer, okay? You're painting white just basically to reveal the leaves. Now this is the beautiful part of doing this on a tripod because this is how easy it is to paint these in. Now, I'm also using just my mouse. I, I, I'm not even using the Wacom tablet right now because I want you guys to see that when you do this with good technique, you make your life that much easier in post, okay? So I'm just gonna paint these leaves in. Here's a little trick too. If you want to see where those leaves are, then what I would do is do a duplicate layer of that leaf layer, right? Delete the mask on this layer. So just delete it so you can see the whole layer, okay? Whoops, I think I painted something in. Now reduce the opacity to let's say 60%-ish or wherever you want. It doesn't honestly really matter too much. Um, you can even leave it at 100% opacity, but it just makes it a little bit difficult to see. So just reduce the opacity maybe to 70%, then select this mask. Now you're painting over the mask, but you can kind of see where the leaves are, right? So all you're gonna do is just paint over those spots to bring those leaves out. Okay, I don't want these leaves that are kind of over the arm and over the face and that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna select those ones. I do want this one out here and that's good. Okay, now I'm just gonna delete this layer and we get back to this. I'm gonna do the same thing with the next layer. So bring it up to the top, create a duplicate, reduce the opacity of this one, add a mask to this one, holding down Alter Option, and now you're gonna paint over that mask with white. Whoops, okay. So let's see, where's our new leaves? I like these down here, let's add those ones. I like these ones. Okay, and let's see, you can turn this on and off just to kind of see where the new leaves are. So I like this one right here too. Oh, I think that one. Okay, so you can kind of see where those leaves are right there. We're gonna add these ones, these ones. Notice that I'm painting with just a brush at full opacity, full flow. Okay, do I want any of the other leaves? Not really, I'm good. So now I'm just gonna delete this one. And now we have those extra leaves added in. So I'm gonna to go to the next layer, do the same thing. And you're just gonna keep repeating this process. So on this side, the leaves are all over here. We have a couple over here, but honestly, I can just add that mask and just probably paint these in very easily, just right here. Okay, when I get close to this guy, I'm gonna kind of get in there, make it a little tighter. And that's good. Next layer. Okay, these leaves are important on the left side. I need to fill in the left side with a little bit more. So I'm gonna jump this, press Control J or Command J to create a copy. Alt to add that black mask. Let's reduce the opacity of this. And let's go right here and start painting in those extra leaves on this side. Okay. Oh, that one was already there. Okay, I'm gonna remove that guy. And then the last layer. Okay, and that's perfect. We have this stuff at the top. So let's go ahead and just add the mask. Paint those in right there at the top. I'll paint these guys in right there. And then fix this little leaf. Okay, so that's it. So it took us less than five minutes inside of Photoshop just to get to this final image. And now we have all the leaves kind of dropping in and being added from everywhere. It looks fantastic. This is where I would go in and just scan to make sure that your mask over your subject is okay. So see this area right here where it's ghosting a little bit? 
This is because on one of the layers, probably this one where the, the leaf and our mask is just not too refined. So what I'm gonna do is just look for that layer. An easy way to do this is hold Alter Option and then click on the eyeball next to each layer. And it's probably this layer that's causing the issue. So what I'm gonna do is go to this layer, go paint black right over this spot and you'll notice that it just gets cleaned right up. So all we're doing is just kind of refining that mask a little bit. Again, I'm still just using my mouse through this whole process. Okay, everything else looks good. What I'm gonna do now, Alt, Control, Shift, E, or Option, Command, Shift, E, and this is where you'd go in and do any additional kind of retouch stuff that you wanna do. The only thing that I really wanna do is kind of clean up a few of these flyaways. So pressing Shift, J, I can grab the uh, patch tool and just make little selections and kind of fix. Now, one of the tricks that I like to do when it comes to flyaways is if you press S to select your clone stamp tool, jump in here close, sample, and disconnect the hair, then when you go to the patch tool, it does a perfect job. So if you don't disconnect the hair like that, then you end up getting this kind of stuff where it's kind of like you got these weird transitions. Whereas we go and we kind of disconnect the hair just a little bit, go right here, disconnect the hair a little bit, and now we can make that selection very easily, whoops, and knock it all out, okay? So disconnecting and then making your selection and doing that is, is a nice trick. The other trick that I like to do, which I'll show you guys on this side. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is actually press the S to bring up my clone stamp tool. I'm gonna use a, a small brush and I'm gonna sample right next to the hair. Alt or option, click to sample, right? Now I'm gonna pull this in and all I'm doing is just pulling in the, the flyaway. So I'm not actually removing the flyaway, I'm just pulling them closer to her her head, right? The cool thing about this, and I'm gonna increase the size of this a little bit. The cool thing about this technique is that I find that when you, when you remove flyaways completely, it looks a little bit unnatural. Um, but when you kind of just pull them in with this, I can paint kind of almost sloppy-like and it basically just recreates the flyaways closer to the head. You guys kind of see that? So it's one of my favorite tricks of like kind of controlling flyaways without actually doing all the extra work uh, there. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. Um, I don't think the flyaways are, actually, you know what? I, I do wanna actually do that. So let me go ahead and just make that change. Okay, let's go in here. And if there's certain areas, I'll show you one other little technique. If there's certain areas that you feel like, okay, I went a little bit too far, you're just gonna add another layer over it and paint back. But I, I honestly think it's fine the way it is. Okay, you can do the same thing up here. Kind of paint those a little bit closer. Okay. And this way we still have a very natural look and feel to the image, but we've kind of pulled them in a little bit. I'm just gonna remove this guy altogether. So certain ones that kind of like jut out like this, I just disconnect them and then grab this and, and remove it entirely. Okay. Same thing here. Okay, I'm gonna remove this guy. All right, last one, disconnect. Let's do a better job of disconnecting. Okay, so clean those flyaways to your heart's content. I'm actually good with this right here. There's one last thing that I wanna show you guys, one last little trick. Uh, we're gonna add a new curves layer, okay? So just add a curves layer, and you're gonna make this pretty exaggerated. So I'm just gonna pull up right here. Um, and then what we're gonna do is on the mask itself, we're gonna press Control I to invert that mask. So none of that shows up at all. What you're gonna do now is go into the eyes. And what I like to do is just with a very faint flow, and I'm still gonna use the mouse again because I wanna show you guys that this is totally doable with a mouse. I'm gonna paint a couple times lightly over kind of the, the eye itself. And what I'm doing is I'm painting over the whites of the eye just to kind of brighten a little bit, but I'm following the existing shadow, okay? So I'm kind of trying to preserve the shadow of the eyelid 
and how it's covering the bottom uh, of the eye, right? Or how it's covering the top of the eye. So I'm just adding this subtle bit of light that's kind of coming into the eyes on each side. What I like to do too at this point is select this layer and just make sure that it looks okay. Like you haven't added any white spots in weird places. And then I like to zoom out. Now when you zoom out, you can see if you've gone too far with it, right? So if I turn this on and off, you can see exactly what's kind of happening. Now that looks great. And what I'm gonna do now, instead of continuing to whiten more, all I'm gonna do is make those catch lights a bit brighter. So raise this to 50% flow and just paint right over the catch lights themselves. Okay, now that is enough to really make the eyes pop. And when we kind of zoom out and you turn this on and off, look at the difference between those two. It's absolutely massive, okay? We wanna make sure that we zoom out because that's when it's easiest to see if we've gone too far and we've kind of created alien eyes. But this looks absolutely awesome now at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and save this out. That's it, we are done. So let's look at the before versus the final. Absolutely crazy, huge difference. I hope you guys learned a ton in this tutorial. From the visualization to the lighting, the setting up of the shots, the shooting, and then the final editing. Now once you get good at this process, honestly the entire editing piece will take you five to 10 minutes tops. So if y'all enjoyed, please give the video a thumbs up that helps us tremendously. Comment below what you guys would like to learn next. Meantime, you can check out all of the gear that we used in the description of the video and uh, subscribe to the channel so I can see you guys back here at same time, same place next week. Peace.